All right, so we're back to the only game where space is the place to end countless lives and inhabitable planets. It's Universe Sandbox 2. I wanted to do something today because I want to see how hard it is and I want to see what happens when we do it. I want to launch a solar system at another solar system. Look everyone, it's our solar system, which is effectively the training grounds for all of the death that happens in this game. Everyone's having a good time in our solar system until another sun passes by with a bunch of planets surrounding it. I'd like to throw like one solar system at it and then maybe like two solar systems at it from different directions. Mainly I just wanna see what happens when solar systems collide because I think that's a realistic way that we're all going to die one day. So what you can do is you can take the star of your choice. We'll, we'll stay with the sun just because I think it's, it's good. Go over here to the launch sequence, 10.9 kilometers a second. That's not too bad. I'm gonna launch it kind of over the top of the sun. I don't think we're gonna, it'll probably run right into the damn sun. This game always decides to screw me over whenever I tried to aim something up. What you can do is uh, add planets to the sun, like so. I think you can see we have an extra Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars hanging out back here. Now, oh, there's an extra Jupiter and Saturn as well. This is gonna be a lot worse than I had previously anticipated. We're gonna need to slow things down because I really don't know what the hell happens when a solar system comes at another solar system like it wants its friggin' lunch money. And here we go. Now, I don't really think that these other planets have enough gravitational pull to really screw a lot of the rest of the solar system out, but I don't know. Again, I've never really tried before. Mm. The spiraling solar system of sadness. It's, it's a much darker and more depressing place than our own solar system. Although honestly, Earth is still totally inhabitable. So that's a thing. Oh crap, Mars. <laughs> there goes Mars. Part of, okay. I think the two suns just collided. They did. Because this is a supernova. And whenever you see a supernova, you can expect that 32,000 degrees Celsius planets are nearby. I like that Saturn is just noping out of here. Oh, but not before it got ejected to 16,000 degrees Celsius as well. Oh, it's Jupiter's twin brother. Other Jupiter, how are you doing? 19,000 degrees Celsius as well, huh? Don't worry though, they'll cool off pretty quick. I think what's interesting is the rest of the matter that's still surrounding the area where the two suns had initially collided. We may need to move the sun slightly further away from one another so that this doesn't happen again. Ultimate engineered solar system. Oh, I remember this glorious place. That's coming up later. Look, everyone, it's like it just was. Except the memories of all the individuals involved haven't been erased, which means that they pretty much know what's coming. Okay, I think I'm gonna fire the sun, like, way up here this time. Actually, you know what? Screw that. Let's choose a different star. Mmm, Crab Pulsar. Seems legit. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this, like, way up here this time. That right there is a beautiful shade of depression. Might as well just put a bunch of Earths around it, because honestly, why the hell not? There we go. Yeah, that's nice. Perfect. Okay. The Earths appear to be having a good time like it's no big deal. They're staying in a fairly consistent orbit. I wonder what the temperature is like. Oh, 17.9 degrees Celsius. That's totally livable. Even the closest one is only 22.7 degrees Celsius. Just a little bit more like Florida. Not really a big deal. All right, we're gonna need to speed things up a little bit here. Everything still looks okay. There's no Earths crashing into each other yet, so that's pretty good. So um, there's a few immediate issues that I can see here. The first is that the sun is once again being pulled out of its orbit. Typically, this is what we in the business call a problem. Now, once again, if the two stars collide, uh, it's not gonna be good, but it doesn't look like they will. It looks like they're totally gonna miss, which is absolutely perfect. Indeed, they did miss, which means that now we're just going to have a bunch of planets fighting for dominance in the sumo ring of destruction. Mercury, Uranus, the Earths coming right to the middle, all on the freeway, just barely missing one another, Miami style. If you turn the trails off, you actually get the opportunity to see just how close, I mean, you know, considering space distance, how close everything is. It is just a legitimate friggin' mess over here as the two stars pull their respective <laughs> friggin' solar systems with them. Every piece of space chunklets is ricocheting off the sun. There goes Venus. Venus is still part of this fight though. It didn't get thrown out completely. All right, we're gonna go ahead and speed things up just a little bit more. We're now moving uh, months per second. And now it's a police chase where the crab pulsar is chasing after the sun. 
and does not want to let it get away. I'd like to take this opportunity to see if any of these places are livable. Uh, no, the Earth is 311 degrees Celsius, which is bad. Uh, the Earth over here is negative 7 degrees Celsius, which is still bad. Negative 69 degrees Celsius. Negative 60 degrees Celsius. We're getting closer to Canada here. I'm sure if I speed things up, nothing could possibly go wrong here. Things are probably going... Yep, things are about to go really wrong. Never mind, they didn't go as wrong as I thought they would. <laughs> I think these two stars just saved each other's life. Everyone else died because everyone else got ejected into space. But when they ran past one another, that means that all that's left is the dispersal of two completely different solar systems, but everyone gets to... Well, no one survived because now they're all going to be like negative 300 degrees Celsius. But everyone survived in that they didn't end up running into one another. All right, new plan. It's going to be a black hole with planets surrounding it, and it's going to shoot through the center of our solar system. I'm going to use a bunch of Jupiters here because they're really big. I really don't know if these Jupiters will just immediately get pulled into the black hole or what, so I'm putting them at many, many, many different distances. Like a lot of different distances. It's also going to be a lot of friggin' Jupiters. Okay, that seems absolutely ridiculous. Let's see how it goes. Ah, uh, the parade of Jupiters. Looks good. Looks hot. Things are working. Some of them look to be getting into an appropriate orbit, which is pretty sweet. Well, this looks absolutely horrifying. The potency of the black hole is pulling the sun and the rest of the planets toward it. But in order to get to the black hole, it first has to go through the Frogger section of Jupiter's. <gasps> okay, something just hit the black hole. I don't know what it was, but it turned into a thousand pieces of sadness. Okay, other things are just starting to bounce around. Uh, that's very unfortunate. Mercury is making its way through. The sun just got routinely obliterated. Uh, Venus, starting to make its way through all the Jupiters, manages to do it. I'm fairly impressed about that. It's taking a long time for Earth to make the U-turn to try and go back through this hellhole, and somehow it made it through without dying. I think maybe it'll get away from all this insanity. The Earth is finally coming back for another pass, and it is gone. It is gone and it is not coming back. My computer is about to weep so much. I don't even want to know. I think we're going to launch a solar system way faster than we did before. I may launch it at the speed of light. Launch. Take that off. Bring us over to light speed. Just one times the speed of light should be plenty. I'm going to send this right in the middle. Okay, so this sun is going to be moving the speed of light. There are countless planets. You can't even see them right now. I've got things slowed down pretty far because I have a feeling it's going to move pretty fast. Okay, so now I'm really slowly going to move the simulation up. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All of the orbiting planets are moving at the speed of light as well. It's just what I always wanted. It looks like a giant meteor shower, but like, you know, on an orbital solar system level. So here we have our light speed solar system coming into the perfectly habitable solar system. I'm gonna go ahead and speed things up just a little bit. So in a moment here, our light speed sun is going to pass through the state, what is effectively stationary sun. I imagine this will create a supernova. I don't know because we're currently moving at light speed. I'm not sure if anything is going to change. And there is the collision and the, okay, that is pretty frigging cool. I've never caught a supernova in such a tiny state before. So it looks like the one supernova with all of its light speed planets is just going to kind of, you know, continue through the solar system, leaving behind the other supernova for all these other planets to contend with. Now, if you remember, all these planets were in a habitable zone. Anyone could have lived on all of them. Right now, the temperature is going up by the second. Turning off the trails and turning on the labels gives you an opportunity to see how many planets were left behind, which are now turning into molten pieces of useless chunk. Everything is vaporized, except for this, which it is vaporizing pretty quickly. So I think part of the issue here is we need it so that the center of a solar system isn't a sun, because when it ever, whenever it impacts with another sun, it creates these supernovas. Instead, we'll use a solar system where the center of it is a planet. All right, just gonna go ahead and delete the sun like it's no big deal. Okay, we've got a sun-sized Pluto in the middle of the perfectly engineered solar system. We've got a 
sun-sized Earth, which is going to have a bajillion regular-sized Earths surrounding it. They are right around on the same plane. Pluto is known for being sad and small, but today Pluto has the big balls. And Gray would like to take this opportunity to tell you about someone else who has big balls. It's Manscaped. That moment when your video is sponsored by Manscaped. One of the items that I'm going to show you in action <laughs> is the ceramic bladed Manscaped Lawn Mower 2.0. In order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and go over to my adorable kitten so you can watch it. Loki, it's a ceramic non-nick blade. You're going to be fine, buddy. Want to be in a sponsored video? <laughs> Oh, I could never shave you. <laughs> For real though, you guys do what you want, but if it's something that you think you'd be interested in, there is a special gift if you use code GRAY. Oh, GRAY still plays the only gaming YouTuber ever in the universe to be sponsored by Manscaped. Let's blow up some freaking solar systems here. I've got things slowed down. I don't know how badly this is gonna go because I didn't launch it too fast. It's only like, you know, like one, like four thousandths of the speed of light. This mess asteroid field is what I have created to go toward this secondary solar system. We're gonna see if we can get any head-on collisions here as everything starts flying through one another. I, it's, it's astonishing. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, on its way through over here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, increase the mass of Pluto many, many, many times. Well, that was unfortunate. I just forced Pluto to turn into a black death ball. I think I'm gonna do well with my uh, Earth here though. I'm gonna see if I can keep it so that it continues to be a planet. Okay, kind of turned into a gas giant, only 51 times the size of, uh, or the mass of Jupiter. I think I'm just gonna keep it there. Okay, the, oh my God. Okay, stop, stop, sweet baby Jesus. The black death that Pluto has become is Firing planets all over the place and causing them to just explode. If you turn off the trails and you turn on the labels, it gives you the opportunity to see some things. I'm actually going to turn the... Oh my god, you can't see anything. All right, there we go. Now we can legitimately see everything following the dark sphere that is Pluto and it is causing total chaos. There are planets flying all over the place. There is pieces flying through the air where planets have been shattered into billions of chunks. Oh, planets are shattering everywhere and it's awesome. It's like a bunch of fireworks. Let me go ahead and turn this off so we can watch the fireworks as repeatedly planets go bursting into red sprays. It looks like everything's stabilizing. If you move back, Everything kind of went around and now it's all stabilizing. Well, I mean, we can't have that. Good, make it a little bit bigger here. There we go. Maybe that'll kind of bring everything back in. I'm not sure what's gonna happen if I make this bigger. Oh my God. Screw it, bigger. I think I may have broken the game because I've made this thing that many times the mass of the sun and things are still kind of running away from it. Never mind, things are no longer running away from it. Earths are currently just repeatedly plowing into the spraying earth that we have created. Okay, now we're about to see some ridiculousness. Hold on, let me see if I can increase this mass even higher. Even higher, higher, higher. It's like a chain gun, a chain gun of sadness. Nothing really affects it though because of how freaking large it is. Come on everyone, step up. The earth the earth has enough enough surface space for all of you. Perfect. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, the perfectly engineered solar system has now been turned into the perfectly engineered sadness. I don't even know what happens. There has to be a point where when I continue to increase this mass, our Earth that we have created turns into a black hole. I just don't know where that mass level is. Huh, there's so much explosions that the surface of it is starting to distort. I may have found an area where I'm breaking the game again. The particles can't even fly into space. The mass is so strong that it brings the particles back into the flaming sphere of sadness. Well, we ended up throwing multiple solar systems at one another. Didn't really get anywhere until you took a planet and then just made it really, really, really big. Then cool things begin to happen. I hey, also hope you enjoyed this episode of Universe Sandbox. See you until next time. Stay foxy, much love.